strategy camp cadets, wake up. Did you get it? Move it. Wake up. What are you doing? Can't you get up? Now get your uniforms on. Follow the student leaders and meet me outside. Understood? Come on, hurry up. Oh, it's cold. It's 7 a.m. The thermometer shows minus 5 degrees Celsius. The day's first ordeal for these children is a series of stretching exercises in the snow on an empty stomach. You are here to attend a marine camp. What are you looking at? Focus on me. Got it? Is that clear? Are you cold? If you're cold, yeah, tough, so just take it. <laughs> now run and touch the stage. Turn around and run back. We are here in Muju, a town located in the center of South Korea. These 41 children will spend five days here. They enrolled in a marine strategy camp. The youngest ones are nine years old. The oldest ones, 18. Many have left their families for the first time. Away from the cocoon, they will be taught discipline, teamwork, and surpassing their own limits. The first row goes first. Speak louder. If you don't speak loud enough, you don't enter the mess. Enter. Even though there is little choice in terms of food, Someone who's 10 years old takes comfort at the canteen. Give me a lot, please. And just a little bit of that. My name is Chai Sung Won. The reason why I came to this camp is to become brave. I tend to be fearful. I'm scared of everything. To become a real man, I need to get over that. Then I can tell my friends I've become a new man. At home, my mother cooks the food that I want to eat. But here, I cannot change the menu. Here, there's no shop. We have no money for the whole four nights and five days. So I cannot eat snacks. I can't wait to eat some again. The children's belongings are stored in this plastic bag. Instructors confiscate their property from the moment they enter the camp. Cutting the children off from the outside world is a key to the camp's success. These are the children's belongings, their personal belongings. If you don't take things away from the students, like uh, money, mobile phones, like if they have a cellular phone, they can call their parents and say, I can't take this anymore, and they can't focus on our training. So, we isolate these kids from the outside world. I can't watch TV here. I can't get on my computer. And the heating doesn't work, so it's cold. On top of that, we have to get up early every day. And I don't really like it. Now the serious training begins. This afternoon, the children have to immerse in the river's freezing water for a whole five minutes. Kim Dong Hyam! Kim Dong Hyam! Are you crying? Are you crying? Can't stand it. Can't stand it, eh? Show me your face. Now get out. Jung Ji Young is one of the camp's five instructors. All of them served in the Marine Corps. In South Korea, military service is mandatory and lasts two years. Jung Ji Young is now employed here full time. In the eyes of civilians, this training might look like child abuse, but in Korea people are really familiar with the military culture. And the important thing is, is that we're not giving them real military training. We're not just 
having them do things, it's, it's important to be reasonable, to tell the children why we're doing these training exercises, so they know why they're doing it, and this all helps to motivate them. When it's over, they will have achieved something out of this camp. So, our final activity tonight is something that's not painful. I want to listen to your stories. You will do a five-minute speech. Understood? In addition to discipline, instructors have the mission to teach children the Asian value of filial piety, reverent obedience to parents. I am... I am here. What are you talking about? I'm... Keep going! I can't hear you! I am here to become self-confident and I will change. And what did you write in the parents-related question? I didn't write anything. Isn't there anything you want from your parents? Well, I don't want to go to the mountain every Sunday. Dong Wu, why do you think your parents take you to the mountain every Sunday? Do you think they really enjoy hiking? No, sir. They might want to have a break on Sunday. Don't you think while you were studying they might want to have some free time and after finishing their hard week at work, why do you think that they care about your studies? Because you are the only person they care about. Yes, sir. The next morning's exercise is an 11 meter rappel, a new ordeal to overcome, especially for the younger trainees. Shout, I love you, mother. I love you, mother. Hey. Rappel. Rappel. I came to the camp because I didn't listen very well to my parents, so they sent me here. It was a bad old habit of mine, so it's really difficult for me to change. To be honest, it was really tough in the beginning, but here I managed to change my bad habit, so I like it in a way. Oh, I was so scared. Are you okay? Yes. What about your hair? Yes, it's fine. Lee soon created this camp eight years ago. He belongs to a generation of South Koreans who experienced the war and economic hardship. In the eyes of his generation, young South Koreans have become weak in both mind and body. Sending children to such camps is a way of hardening them. I decided to open this camp because Korean kids have no respect toward others. They have troubles at home. They rebel against their parents. I started this camp to teach them how to behave at home. In order for them to become brave, lions put their offspring into the wild. But in Korea, parents care too much about their children. Without such training, children would never face the real world. Another problem is that our education system only focuses on the college entrance exam, which is inhibiting the children's future. Parents tend to protect their children from taking any responsibilities. That prevents them from growing up. So there is the parents' problem on one side and the Korean education system's problem on the other side. Here we really give children strict training. But when they leave, we express to them how much we love them. Emotion is spared until the very last night. The group gathers around a campfire. Holding hands, eyes closed, the children listen with reverence to their instructor's farewell speech. Here, you get punished for no reason. You wanted to do well, but your body didn't listen to you, and the instructors kept pointing at you guys all the time. You asked yourself, can I make it? Why am I here following this hard program? Why did my parents send me here? With all these thoughts, one day passes, then another day, and now it's the last night. Don't try to bring home everything you've learned here. Just remember one important thing that you need for yourself. Understood? Ah!
Is that your mother? Yes. Stop. And salute your mother. Good job, my son. Did you have a hard time? Well done. Good job. I think he has grown up so much. I shouldn't have worried that much because you did so well. Did you miss me? Yes. Why did you send your son to this camp? So that he becomes self-confident and brave. I think it was the right decision to make. Don't you think it would be better to be a stricter mother instead of sending him to such camps? I think it is just better for him to do what he has to do on his own. Maybe I smothered him too much. And that's why he lost confidence. From now on, I'd better trust him more to do things by himself. It's also good sometimes for a mother not to see her son. After being apart, I feel like he's even more precious. This five-day boot camp costs 300 euros, no small sum for this middle-class family. But their child's success is worth any sacrifice. In a few days, Songwon will take the path to school, another road filled with plenty of obstacles.